Hey, welcome to the Intelligence Live What's the Buzz, where leaders and hands-on experts share how they have turned hype into outcome. Today, we'll talk about how you can help increase your business leader's AI fluency. And who better to talk to about it than someone who's helped uh, organizations do just that, Laksh Srinivasan. Hey, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Andreas. Great to be here. Fantastic. Hey, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do? Yeah, I've been in the data analytics space uh, for about 15 plus years um, and currently uh, co-founded this institute called Return on AI Institute with uh, Tom Davenport. And, and, and part of our mission is really helping companies and policymakers understand what this AI is and help them go through this journey faster than they would be able to do it on their own. Awesome. Hey, I'm, I'm really looking forward to our conversation today and uh, uh, super impressed that you're working, um, you know, with um, the likes of, of Tom and, and, and other leaders as, as well. Um, so if you are um, just joining the, the stream as, as an audience, drop a comment in the chat. What do you think AI fluency of business leaders actually entails? I'm really curious. And obviously, you'll learn more about it over the next 30 minutes. Um, so there's one more thing I, I want to share with you. And you know, you've know you probably seen this the last two weeks. But for the next four weeks, we'll change things up a bit on once the buzz. And I'll give this one here a rest. So that one, you know, we can, or that way we can uh, jump straight to our conversation and have a lot more time for your questions. So don't be shy. Put them in, in the chat as well. Uh, anything that's that's on your mind relative to, to the topic. Um, on Monday, we'll have the first What's the Buzz audio event, and we'll talk about reframing AI as a product and the mindset that you need for that. On Tuesday, uh, we'll have another live stream. We'll talk about how different cultures actually view AI as an opportunity or a risk. And the week after, on the 15th, AI ethics leader Reed Blackman will join, and he'll share his experience of putting AI ethics uh, into practice. And all of the events start at noon Eastern time. I'll post the links in the chat in a few minutes. All right, so with that out of the way, let's jump right in. Um, so like, I, I see different terms floating around when we talk about AI and readiness of, of leaders. You know, readiness is certainly one. Literacy is another mindset, which is one that I favor. But I know you call it fluency. Um, what does AI fluency in, entail in, in, in your um, description, in your definition? Yeah, um, AI, uh, I mean, whatever we call this, uh, mindset, fluency, literacy, data-driven culture uh, is as, as complex as definition of AI. And by the way, I should, I should begin with that. When, when we say AI and, and Tom Davenport uh, advocates for it. We use a very broad, uh, we use it very broadly, starting with kind of data, advanced analytics, automation, uh, and everything AI. And so fluency uh, for me is uh, much more than answering, kind of taking a quiz. The way we are thinking about it is how, how do leaders feel, think, and act about all things, you know, data analytics, AI. And, and so um, leaders, if you focus it on leaders, it's about decision-making, right? And decision-making happens through intuition. So though we call it fluency, at the end of the day, it's part knowing some fundamentals, it's part actually applying them, and part how do you demonstrate those behaviors in a broad way as a leader. Uh, so it's a combination of those, you know, we're calling it fluency, lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, now, I, I know, you know, that AI has been a hype topic for the last six or seven years. And, um, you know, we would expect that there is already some fluency, some literacy. Um, that, that exists in, in businesses that leaders, you know, obviously have this as, as something that's top of, of their mind. Um, but where are we in terms of AI fluency of business leaders? And especially for, for the audience here as an AI or COE leader, how can you actually help and, and how can they help increase AI fluency of their business leaders? Yeah, I would love to hear what the audience thinks uh, because, 
you know, in their own company where, where, where it stands. But if you look at research and, and there's kind of direct and indirect evidence of where things are at. Direct is, um, I remember a HBR uh, research or article and, and also an MIT article. Uh, if you want to put numbers on it, uh, that study showed 25% of CFOs and CEOs, uh, they said, are digitally proficient, digital as in data analytics, AI, and I use a broader term. And and uh, the th- and 12 and a half, um, uh, sorry, boards and CEOs are about 25%. CFOs are at 12 and a half percent. And the thing that is shocking to me is 45%, only 45% of CIOs and CTOs are digitally proficient. Right, so that's kind of direct oh, through okay. some, some research. Um, right. If you look at if you look at um, kind of indirect evidence, we at the institute we did a success factors study uh, with Spencer Stewart, which we published. Tom and I did a webinar with at MIT Sloan Management Review. What we found there is uh, that. That, by the way, there's also a, a research report Tom released yesterday or today, all points to 59, 60% of the majority of the CDO, CDAO spend time educating leaders, you know, participating in data-driven culture initiatives. So it tells me, that, you know, CDOs, CDAOs, you know, it gets very lonely in that, in that department. Uh, because what they're so far ahead of the rest of the company in terms of what AI is in their fluency and literacy, uh, the rest of the organization, uh, especially the leadership, um, is not there. So they end up going through that. So uh, I would say in summary, overall, the, the, where the state of the state when it comes to leaders and AI uh, is not where it needs to be, right? I'm talking about digital, not, you know, kind of, non-native, not digitally native companies. Of course, if you go into a digitally yeah. native company uh, like Google or, or Facebook, I mean, you know, so that's the model. That's the target where we need to get to. Uh, but if you look at non-digitally right. native, that's not where it needs to be. And, and why why do you feel that is, is it, is it that leaders are just so, so busy with other things or is it is it so complex, so far out there, so... You know, so so little tangible. Um, this this blurry thing of, of AI that um, magically solves all my problems, but I'm I'm struggling to to you know apply it to my business or apply it in in a context that's relevant to me. It's probably all of the above. I I, I feel, but um, I'm curious. What do you see? Um, what some of the, yeah, the reasons it's are? A, it's a it's a great question, by the way. Um, um, you know, we, you know, for example, we did a kind of one-on-one session for a CEO of a professional services company. And he comes from um, kind of an industry that's used to looking at numbers. And, and, and so he understood some of the basics very well, but he was just saying, how does, how does he spark that interest in the rest of his management team? Um, and so, so why is that if you look at it? Um, to me, um, there's a number of things going on. Um, there is a view that uh, if they look at digitally native companies and their CEOs and how they feel, think, and act, they just think it's too far of a gap and therefore it's not for them. They would rather hire a CDAO. In essence, what CEOs do or leaders do is to you know, find the talent, delegate, and, and somebody else would report you know, the status. Right. So that's, that's part yes. one. So that's why majority of the CDOs spend majority of their time educating leaders. And number two, um, I think a lot of leaders are on the sidelines uh, based on my kind of travel is because somehow they think uh, AI fluency means they have to go learn, take a Coursera class, learn Python, build a deep learning model. Um, And so there's a bit of kind of misconception out there and the way I, I talk to leaders who are interested in this is to say, look, you don't need to, you can still treat this as a black box. You don't need to go learn Python, build a model, but you do need to know what inputs are, what the outputs are, what is it saying? Just like, mm-hmm. you know, the CFO in a company doesn't need to be a forensic accountant, let alone 
um, you know, uh, be, be an expert in accounting. But as a CFO, uh, she should know how to look at P&Ls, how to look at, you know, a kind of a balance sheet and, and to be able to ask them, you know, pretty deep questions about understanding risks and opportunities around a balance sheet or a P&L. So we are talking about when we say for leaders, AI fluency, we're talking at that level of at least understand enough, because if you think you don't need to, you as a leader in a company today, you already own the risks of AI. You're using it. You just don't know about it. Um, and, right. and clearly, clearly, um, as a leader, there are, there are opportunities because of competitive disruption by digitally native companies. So either opportunity or as risk, this is something you are in it. Um, and therefore, we think it's important, uh, especially with AI and data analytics, uh, you understand a bit more, just enough uh, to be able to um, you know, get the organization in and lead the transformation. That's awesome. Yeah, I I think that uh, resonates really, really well. At least with me, and I, I can also see from some of the comments in in, in the chat here. Um, maybe I'll, I'll pick up one. Um, I, I think that um, today's leaders have for too long delegated digital to CIOs and CDOs, and now it's part of everyone's competency at different levels, and everyone has the responsibility to drive that change. I think that sums it up very, very nicely. Mm -hmm. um, also, what what you shared. Um, I see Jesse asked the question in, in, in the chat, so I'll, I'll pick that one up as well. And he says, hey, so there is a lot of misconceptions about what is required to have um, ex executive level fluency. Um, do, you, do you see these, these misconceptions um, and, and what do you feel they, they are? Yeah, I, I think we talked about this, uh, which is uh, one is around um, leaders think um, you know, AI is, uh, I'll give you an example. Part of our research, we were talking to somebody that's, that's leading an AI project. And, and, um, and we wanted to understand, you know, how they interact with their business leaders. And, and, and uh, what he said is, uh, in this company, the, the leaders think AI, doing an AI project is like downloading an app from the app store. Um, and so one misconception is, oh, there's cloud and there's all the stuff available. It's like clicking and downloading. Why does it take so long, right? So what is that? What is that misconception? So it's about unrealistic expectations. The mm -hmm. other one is, again, I talked about it. AI is, oh, it's for those folks uh, that actually build models. I don't need to worry about it, right? Whereas we are saying, you no, know, with AI, there is some technical stuff that you do need to understand, not to go build a model, but at least you have to understand, uh, for example, most of the insights coming out of an AI algorithm, let's say, it's a probabilistic output, right? Yep. And, and by the way, business leaders deal with uncertainty every day. <laughs> um, but, but now you're, you're now, the, the AI teams are talking to them about, well, the standard deviation is this, and it's a variability is this. So we are now communicating in very technical language. Uh, so, so, so the other thing is it looks way too technical, and I don't have time for it. It's mm -hmm. another another kind of misconception. And 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 the third one is I think somebody in the comments talks about you know the the millennials are reaching you know so they almost think it's a generational thing as well, saying look you know um, one of the hospital. Um, presidents that I interviewed, and I talked to him saying, look, Lex, you know, you know, we're all dinosaurs. And, and the only way the healthcare is going to transform going to digital is as we get new leaders in. So I think that's, that's part of the problem with this problem, if I could be bold in saying that is, it's so complex. It isn't like one or yeah. two or three consumption, and we can put a solution. It's a very complex set of things you have to kind of diagnose and, and, and kind of solve and, and in a sustained way. For this to really make a difference. Perfect. I, yeah. Um, I, again, looking at the at, at, the, uh, at another comment before we move on to to, to the next question, um, I think that's a great one as, as well. AI fluency has to be coupled with accepting that data is coming to the center. Um, I see that in, in a lot of conversations that I've I've had with um, leaders and, and decision makers. You know that. At the end of the day, it does come down to the data. Do you have it? Do you have access to it? Is it clean? Can you cleanse it somehow? 
uh, and, and still have it in, in a usable form? Or, or how much time do you even spend getting to the data before you can get started with AI? Um, yeah, it, 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 if I could jump in on that, that's another misconception. Um, a lot of leaders think, oh, uh, I don't have a lot of data in my business or the data we have is so messy, so uh, I can't really use, again, I'm using code unquote AI. Um, and, 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 you know, I have done a number of projects in my prior life, uh, you know, with Fortune 10 companies to, you know, uh, startups, um, as well as, uh, you know, through our research, what we find is companies that are generating value with AI today, uh, they're able to put some points up on the board with whatever data that you have in whatever state that you're in. You don't need to go and say, I'm gonna put all this in a data lake and take five years and curate it and get to a data. And therefore, that's another big misconception saying, what is it gonna take? How much of investment do I need to put in this before I can actually see some return? So that's another misconception uh, that happens. Um, I think that that leads nicely, uh, maybe to, to to the next question, um, and you know that is, you know, what's what's a good approach then to to go for who leads AI projects in in, in their companies or leads the CUE, and and what concrete steps can can they take to to bring to their leaders and to help them you know better understand these misconceptions or resolve those misconceptions. Yeah, um, I wish I had a silver bullet. Uh, that that you can just magically turn on. It's it's a long march and it's a complex. Um, and 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 um, and so before I kind of get into uh, kind of be prescriptive about it, I think the way to think about this is, um, you know, with with anything, right? The common framework is first of all, can I can assess uh, the the level of fluency today? Some type of diagnostic, for example. I know about this Fortune 500 company, and they, they did a survey of all employees, including the leadership team, on a couple of different dimensions around AI fluency. Just start somewhere around trying to understand the current state. Um, and, and, um, and that would give you a lot of clues about um, you know, the different misconceptions and so on and so forth. Um, and, and, and so part of that is also not only some foundational knowledge about what AI is, uh, but it's also about how do I go about it, uh, and then and then what are different kind of behaviors that you know um, that that I would have to demonstrate for me to internalize it. Meaning, how do I apply it? Not just learn uh, the techniques, but how do I apply it and build that intuition that as a leader I need for me to make decisions. Um, and and therefore, so first, just around kind of assessing where you are and and what is kind of the state of the state. The second would be, um, you know, based on that, kind of figuring out some type of a program design. So one thing we find is if you make this kind of as an add-on to your project, uh, you know, I, I remember some of my clients used to tell me when we do kind of weekly project reviews and where we present insights back from their own data, it blew their minds. And some of them used to tell me saying, Lax, this is the most fun 30 minutes I have in my job, learning about my own data that you as a consultant are coming and telling me, right? So, yeah. so, um, so you'll have to kind of figure out uh, some way of sparking that interest in leaders. Uh, for some, it could be playing back uh, kind of storytelling on things that is some you know that blows their mind from your own data. The second could be what I call the uh, IKEA effect, uh, which is involve them in some mm -hmm. task activity. Uh, it could be uh, yeah. one company that 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 we researched. Uh, they talked about bringing them on in 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 kind of labeling data in a very fun way that they need for the uh, the machine learning models, right? Because labeling data is about business leaders saying no, that's a good thing or that's a bad, good or bad, right? Label uh, yeah. on data. Uh, so that could be another way. Another way could be you know I know there's Dali, there's GPT three. I'm playing with it. So there are ways find things that would that that would kind of they don't need to understand what it is, but they get to use it in a way that that kind of gets their interest. Um, and and then and then the third would be you'll have to come up with some way of sustaining it in the sense uh, that it can't be just one off uh, that happens on an ad hoc basis. It's a it's it's a formal program 
and it could be reverse mentoring. So there's different elements that goes into a program design. And the third is how do you sustain it? Um, and, and along with what we are finding is uh, that these executives, the way they learn is not by instruction. They learn through socially, meaning how do you get different executives to talk to each other? How do you yeah. get executives that have learned to showcase it as well as uh, with a heavy dose of executive hands-on coaching uh, that, that gives them a safe space for them to ask questions without kind of, you know, um, uh, kind of, you know, um, kind of putting themselves out there uh, with, with the rest of the company in a way that they can actually ask questions about saying, this team came and told me uh, about something about R squared. What does that mean? How do I build that intuition around? Do I need to care about it? So it's a complex set of things, customizing it to your own leadership team, but then sustaining it, in my opinion, over nine to 12 months before they actually develop that fluency and intuition. That's a great recommendation, and, and, and answer I think shows how multifaceted um, this this challenge actually is. Um, to your point, there's there's no silver bullet, right? Um, there are different aspects that, that you need to work on continuously. Um, yeah, yeah. If, if I could add one more thing, Andreas, little... and... sure. running late. Uh, there's a bit of there's no, a no, bit of uh, no, no, delay here. Yeah, one thing if I can add is just think about it this way. Um, you know, I, 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 um, I trained to become a firefighter, right, a while ago, which I'm not that active in anymore. And I was just thinking about I, I, I'm not mechanically, you know, very, very savvy um, and, and, you know, growing up in engineering background. But I learned and, you know, I, I was out there in a few fires and not as good as some of the firefighters, but, you know, I was decent. So I eventually built fire, you know, intuition around mm -hmm. it. And so I was thinking, so there, so if you look at how, how uh, firefighters get trained and actually apply it, it's two, two methods. One is called uh, the, the drill method, which is you go to class, learn some things, but then you do every Monday night, you do drills. So this is simulation and, 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 and kind of giving you a feel for it, right? And then the second is actually going out in in and calls and actually fighting fires or being in road you know motor vehicle accident, and so some of that is applying what you learn and then and then kind of learning what you I mean applying and then figuring out what went well or not good and then feeding back into that you know in a sustainable way. So so part of what what we may have to do here, which by the way at the institute we are thinking about working on a couple of projects is how do you actually bring AI to teach leaders about AI, which is there's a huge thing going on around digital twins and simulation and also personalization. So we think one of the approaches could be how do you actually bring AI and technology and in, 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 this, in this space as well. So if any of you are thinking about it or you have thoughts about it, uh, definitely would love, to, would love to connect. Yeah, fantastic. Um, there's, there's one question that I see it, um, that I, a lot of times they love, you know taking take about AI and, and a, a lot of focus on, uh, business metrics on, on like how can we you know lost increase revenue these these kind of things um, but where do you see ethics play into this or, or what role does ethics already play in this? Uh, education enablement around AI fluency. Do you see that the leaders are considering it, are aware of it, want want to learn more about it, need to learn more about it? Where do you see ethics in in, in that uh, frame? Yeah, it, yeah. It depends. It depends on uh, first of all ethics and and everything around responsible AI. You know, all of that is part of this this fluency that leaders you know need to learn and and. And uh, there's just so many examples out there of of things going wrong very fast, and that could that could end up in uh, kind of financial, legal, and reputational damage to your company, um, right? And there's this great example of Microsoft having to shut down that project that you could send a picture or video and it recognizes something about who you are, you know, gender and other things. So there are lots of examples out there of things going wrong. But on the other hand. AI is probabilistic system, and 
and therefore you know it has issues. So yes, there's there's a lot of uh, responsible and 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 other frameworks out there, and that is part of this program. Uh, that just because you have data and you can build an algorithm doesn't mean you go out there and do it. There are questions you ask, just like you know you would you would you would manage any other piece of initiative in your company at the leadership level. I think that's a that's a good approach and a, and, and a good answer to to wave uh, to weave it in, in, in into that uh, program and or you know maybe even more than 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 just weaving it in but making it a cornerstone of of it it only becomes more important as we go forward um in and, and as the you know the the scale and the reach and, and the impact of things like ai and um ai based decisions um, can, can influence our lives and, and other lives as well mm -hmm. um you know we've or you've talked about this being maybe a 12 month long process keep your leaders involved and, and engaged um, but what happens after the 12 months? How do you know when they are AI fluent? Is, is there a hard KPI that, that you measure and you say now they wake up in the morning and they're AI fluent or how do you gauge that? Yeah, yeah I, I, th I think there is, um, you know, there is uh, kind of three approaches, right? First of all, yes, there are some things that is measurable, like, you know, AI quotient, Right, so you can have a bunch of questions that you answer. I took one just recently on LinkedIn to make myself machine learning, you know, kind of things. That's number one. Uh, that's I think is basic. Um, and and these leaders, they don't get into being leader without you know being curious about things, being able to absorb new things, and be able to you know repeat back. So I think that's number one. Number two, which is more very important, is do they demonstrate behaviors? And, and if you look at, at the leadership level in other things, behavior changes that happens through a 360 degree feedback. So you have to have either the COE or the AI teams or the leadership teams themselves trying to kind of give feedback to each other. That's that's kind of the second aspect of it. Um, and the third, which is the most important at the end of the day, is does it actually move the needle, which is you know, what is happening to as a company? Is that manifesting in... Um, you know, in, in returns on AI investments, um, even mm -hmm. if they don't become, a, you know, become a Google uh, in a one year, do they actually go in the direction of, do they, again, do they feel, think, and act uh, is another way? Is that is that manifesting in real concrete evidence results? Uh, our institute is, it's not about AI, it's a return. Therefore, I would look for, tell me measurable and, and kind of, you know, kind of strategic returns that you're getting as a company uh, uh, from your AI investments. Mm -hmm. Now, not, not every project is immediately successful, right? In, in, in many cases, it's, it, it's more like a project than like an IT project where you know from start to finish, that's, that's how we we'll do it. It's, it's much more iterative uh, with, with AI. How do you convey th that part to, to a leadership audience, is, especially say, if, if you define a roadmap you want to deliver against it, but you it's in the road? I think that's kind of the Carlo was, was asking chat just now. Um, yeah, look, I, I think, um, you know, AI roadmaps, um, well, that's why this has to be comprehensive. Look, these leaders, um, what we are finding is at the Institute, we have put together three curriculums, right? So what we found is there are different roles the leaders play around AI in a company, right? So there are, there are certain leaders, could be the CEO, uh, um, depending on the size of the company, could be could be the C-level teams. They, they are, they're about deciding what should AI be for the company and more importantly, what should AI not be for the company? To your point about don't, there should be science projects, right? This should be something that you declare that this is the, our ambition for the company. So that is one role. The second role is really around what I would call a steering committee role. So, there, so a bunch of executives are in a steering role, which is to say, um, you know, what is the AI roadmap strategy? And most importantly, how do I allocate capital? How do I fund this project? How do I not fund the project? How do I kill this project? So, so they are in that role. The third role is a lot more around at an AI project level as a project AI leader. It could be an AI stakeholder. So they are much more around how do they communicate to AI teams, data scientists in some type of an AI language. So what we are finding is 
yes, you need to educate them on all, but I would segment your leadership in these roles and then start to give the fundamentals to all of them. It's the same. But then from there, how do they apply? Depends on what role do they play when it comes to AI in the in your company and then design a curriculum, design a program around it in a sustainable way. I think that's that's super actionable and, and um, super tangible to, to you know, group them in, in, in different areas of, of sponsorship or, you know, um, how close they are to, to the actual zeros and ones and how close they are to or the, the strategic aspects. Um, I hope you in the audience find that uh, just as valuable um, thinking about these, these categories. Um, so, hey, we're coming up on, on time. Um, I was wondering if you can summarize the top three takeaways for our audience today before we wrap it up. Yeah, I, I think um, today um, there are a lot of misconception about what leaders, um, you know, under, under AI fluency. Um, we think it's important that uh, we have to get the leaders to be more engaged and become more comfortable um, within an organization for AI to really produce the transformational results. Otherwise, it will just be a bolt-on, uh, another tool in the toolbox. The third is uh, th there is a lot of content out there, but as I said, that you have to figure out what is what is the individual leaders, kind of their baseline, and then create a program that's customized and given what role they're going to play and then put together a program in a sustainable way. Fantastic. Um, thanks for, for summarizing that. Um, and also, thanks so much for joining us today and, and for sharing your expertise with us. And um, it was really great having you on, Lex. Great. Great to be here, Andreas. Important topic. Glad we were able to get the audience to participate as well. Perfect. Again, thanks to you in, in the audience as well. And see you next time for another round of the Intelligence Briefing Live. What's the buzz? Bye-bye.